my lovely people, and welcome to Owen's Mind, a light-hearted trip through the contents of my head and the world in general. It is Wednesday the 22nd of April, my name is Owen, and here is what is on my mind today. So as usual, I've picked out five stories making the headlines I would like to give my thoughts on. Links will be in the description below so you can read each article in full and show those original publications some love. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Story number one. The story number one today comes from Sky News, an amazing story. A woman was saved after her breast implant deflected a bullet away from her heart. So yes, there's a 30-year-old woman, she's not been named, uh, and she was saved from death by her breast implants after they deflected a bullet when she was shot in the chest when she was walking down a street in Canada. Um, she only realised she'd been shot when she felt heat and pain in her chest and saw blood when she looked down, according to a report published in the Sage Journal. Uh, the victim was treated at McLean Clinic in Mississauga, Ontario, where the implants were removed. The report added the only additional injuries, apart from the, the bullet wound, was a fractured rib. Uh, during surgery... Uh, surgeons removed the woman's left breast implant and found a bullet tract which aligned with the entry wound, but no bullet. They later examined the right implant and found that it had been flipped upside down. The dome of the implant was damaged and the bullet was located beneath the woman's right breast in her chest. Uh, they then removed the bullet and gave it to police so it could be forensically examined. Uh, photographs taken by the surgeon show where the bullet went through the left implant and landed in her right implant. Uh, Dr. Giancarlo uh, Macavenu? who wrote the paper, said the woman's left breast implant subsequently must have deflected the bullet from her heart and saved her life. He said clinical examination revealed a comfortable patient in no distress with a single entry wound in the superior pole of the left breast. Based on the trajectory of the bullet entry, clinically and evaluation and uh, radiologically, the only source of bullet deflection is the left breast implant. The implant overlies the heart and, the <coughs> and interthoracic cavity and therefore likely saved the woman's life. Uh, at this point, the firearm has not been recovered and the gun has not been found. Uh, the case is only one of five incidents where patients' implants have blocked bullets, including three which are thought to have saved victims' lives. Dr. McEvenu said, although rare, these observations lend support to the hypothesis that indeed breast implants can save lives. So, yeah, just it's, so it entered from her perspective through the left. It sounds like it came down at an angle and it hit the implant and then tracked across, hit the right one, flipped it over. And then lodged in a chest. So this, and it's just it's weird to think because an, an implant is designed to feel like tissue. It's designed to feel like breast tissue. It's designed to be soft. Um, I don't know what they are now. They used to be obviously silicon back in the day, but I think that it's a different compound now. It's a different, but it's a it's a fluid that's in there. I believe. I'm no expert on breasts or the implants they contain. But yeah, the fact that this had enough um, sort of texture. To deflect a bullet is phenomenal and it saved this woman's life so amazing if i were you'd want to keep that wouldn't you if i was her i'd want to keep the implant and put it in, set it in a box somewhere just say you know this saved my life you know because a lot of people argue against breast implants going oh, it's just cosmetic and it's just that and it's like no better than kevlar women so there you go um fantastic the woman's gonna be okay um hopefully they'll catch um, whoever did it, so it doesn't say if it was intentional, if somebody was, I don't know, shooting off rounds in the, in the yard at a target or something and one went astray and hit her, they don't say if it was a target attack or not, um, there's nothing in the article to say that she would have been targeted by anybody or she's into anything that would, you know, that might lead to her getting shot at, um, but thankfully she survived thanks to her lucky breast implants. So there you go. Anyway, let's move on. Story number two. This is from BBC News. Uh, speeding drivers flout the speed limit during the lockdown. So yeah, roads are quieter, so people are getting foot down by the sound of it. So speeding motorists have been travelling at more than double the limit during lockdown, UK police revealed. One driver has recorded 134 miles an hour in a 40 mile an hour limit in London, while another was clocked at 115 on a 40 mile an hour road. In Greater Manchester, uh, a crash could put huge strain on the blue light services, one force said, if it led to injury or staff being exposed to COVID-19 and forced into self-isolation. Uh, forces said it was only a minority of people who were ignoring the rules. So Superintendent Julie Ellison from Greater Manchester Police Specialist Operation Team said, my officers are working tirelessly to track down these offenders who are using the quieter roads for their own personal racetrack. Uh, Police Scotland also said over the Easter period between the 10th and the 14th of April, 16 people were found committing drink or drug driving offences. Now it doesn't say if that's higher than usual. Um, 16 people in a four day period, you know, that could be a busy weekend. However, because traffic levels are lower, you'd imagine that that's, you know, 
and disproportionate. It says it is astonishing to see people behave so recklessly, particularly when we all in need. Uh, we all need to be doing our bit to stay home, protect the NHS, and save lives," said Superintendent Simon Bradshaw from Police Scotland's Road Policing Division. Uh, Great Manchester Police said it had caught more than 6,200 drivers breaking speed limits since lockdown began on 23rd of March. Uh, the force recorded a driver doing 115 on a 40 mile an hour road and one reaching speeds of 129 on the M62. Uh, speeding has doubled in Lincolnshire's roads under the lockdown despite reduction in the amount of traffic by two thirds, police said. Um, the concern we currently have relates to those undertaking unnecessary travel. A serious road collision can result in around 20 emergency services staff having to attend the scene. Uh, Chief Inspector Steve Lenny from Dorset, Devon and Cornwall Roads Policing Unit said, if somebody involved in the collision tests positive for COVID-19, then that is a substantial number of emergency services staff forced into self-isolation and unable to work, which puts huge strain on all blue light services, not just the NHS. Um, forces reporting an increase in speeding offences also include Northumbria, Leicestershire, Bedfordshire, Cambridgeshire, Hertfordshire and Merseyside. Um, Superintendent Andy Coxon, Metz Police Road and Traffic Policing Command, said his team had recorded one driver travelling 134 in a 40 mile an hour zone. Uh, Joshua Harris, director of campaigns at Road Safety Charity Brake, said there was never an excuse for speeding. He said, with only essential travel permitted, we would hope to see speeding decline, and so the reported increase is deeply concerning. We urge everyone to follow government guidance and stay home. Yeah, absolutely. So not just... <laughs> It's not about just don't make unnecessary journeys, which is obviously the top of the list. And that is every day, any time you turn on the news or open a newspaper, it's one the the kind of the golden rules about how we're going to beat this thing and get past it. Don't make unnecessary journeys. So not only that, but people are doing that and then speeding because the roads are clearer, so they can get the foot down and think it's fine. They're probably thinking, number one, emergency services police are going to be busy doing other stuff, and number two, the roads are clear, so there's less traffic there. However, as the article correctly points out, if there is a crash, if there is an incident, you pull up to 20 emergency services staff away from other duties they could be doing. So if, it's, if the vehicle is twisted or it's a multiple vehicle, you need fire engines and things to cut vehicles open and, and free trapped people. You need multiple ambulances, you may need um, more police to kind of monitor the roads and close areas off and, and divert and then you need traffic to uh, the motorway, if it's on a motorway you'll need motorway people to come out put cones out to, to bring it off and then you need people to come and clean up if there's oil spills and glass and all so it's a huge effort for one crash if somebody in those vehicles test positive for COVID-19 everybody who attends it potentially has to now self-isolate because they've all been exposed to it so it, all those people are now taken out of the system. They've got to be at home, isolating. So that's, there's less emergency services available. So it's just craziness, you know, don't speed anyway. Um, you know, I've been caught speeding doing, you know, 35 in a 30. You know, that's my bad. So yeah, I'm a bit of a hypocrite, but I've never done more than two, three times the speed limit because you can. So, yeah, a bit of popcorn in the kettle black, admittedly, but, you know, I've learnt my lesson, I've not had a speeding ticket in a long, long time. So, please, just, there's got to be other things people are doing as well. There'll be other things people shouldn't be doing, which they are doing, because there's less people on the streets. There's less people to witness them doing stupid stuff. So, just please, speeding, obviously, you don't speed, and certainly not in this, because of the pressure it's going to put on the system in whole, but anything else that people are up to, which they shouldn't be doing, but they may be doing, just, you know, please, there's a story later on, which is going to kind of come back to this in a big, bad way, so... Anyway, let's move on. Story number three. So this is uh, Reuters via MSN News. So cartoon monster help explain coronavirus to Nigerian children. Um, yeah, so it says it's hard enough for adults to get their heads around the coronavirus, but for children it can be even more difficult to understand why they can't go outside and play with their friends. So we have a Nigerian filmmaker. I apologise, I'm going to do my best with his name. He's called Nia uh, Akinmolian. Nia Akinmolian created a cartoon monster. He's a uh, filmmaker who's created a 90 second animation to help youngsters, youngsters understand why they have to stay at home um, after schools in Lagos were shut down from the 23rd of March and public gatherings were banned to stem the spread of the disease. Uh, it tells the story of two siblings, Habib and Funke, 
Uh, Habib gets tired of staying at home and decides to sneak out to play soccer. His older sister, Funke, warns him not to go out, but he insists only to be confronted by a monster. So, Akin Molian, best known for directing The Wedding Party 2, Nigeria's highest grossing movie, said he was inspired after several attempts to explain the lockdown to his five-year-old son. He says, but he still didn't get it until I kind of changed the narrative and said the coronavirus actually looks like a big monster and it is out there in the street and if you go out, it will catch you. So he's kind of made like a boogeyman out of it because everyone, all kids know about the boogeyman and monsters under the bed and this kind of stuff. He says, the message seems to have sunk in with some children who've seen the video. Um, my favourite part was when a boy opened the door and saw the coronavirus, the monster outside, he slammed the door and had to go inside. And now I know that this is not the right time to go outside or anywhere else, said um, Azichi Nuagu, nine, watching with her sister at their Lagos home. So Aki Molian made the animation through his production company, um, Antil Studios, using a 10-strong crew working separately from their homes. It has been distributed for free, it can be downloaded in English. Igbo, Yoruba, Hauser, French, and Swahili, and it's showing, it's showing on some terrestrial television stations. As of Sunday, Nigeria had recorded 627 cases of the virus, and 21 people have died, including the president's chief of, chief of staff. So yeah, we kind of don't... This is not really mentioned in the news much, the effect this is having on our kids and on children. And um, yeah, anything we can do to kind of give them the information. I mean, we don't want to give them... You don't want to scare your kids. You want to protect them from some of the, the harsher realities of it. But you need them to have enough respect for it that they, they follow the rules and they don't try and sneak out and this kind of thing. I um, mean, again, at the minute, technology is fantastic because it allows people to keep in touch. So my kids do a lot of online gaming because there's you, you're mic'd up. You can still chat to your friends and this kind of stuff. And you can obviously see them visually and things like that. But, you know, younger children might not understand why, you know, Every other night of the week they can go and see their friends, they can go to the park, and now they couldn't. Now they can't. And trying to explain to a kid the kind of intricacies of a virus is a tough thing to do. So what this gentleman's done is like, well, let's let's make the virus a, 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 something they can relate to. And all kids can relate to monsters because you see them on TV and they're in your kids' stories and, you know, this kind of thing. So by giving it a physical kind of look and a physical form and saying, you know, this is out there, and it's, it, you can't see it, but this is what it looks like. You know, be wary of it. This is why we stay in the house, because this is out there. And if that's getting the, if that's getting the message across effectively for kids, fantastic. You know, and this guy took the time here, this 10-strong team, they all respected social distancing to create the movie, so fantastic. And it's out there for free, and it's in multiple languages, so yeah, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant stuff. Anyway, so Remember what I said about the speeding one and how it comes back? Here we go. So this is story number four. This is in the mirror. US dad who said lockdown was bull dies after catching the virus. Again, this is people who are not taking it seriously or, you know, not following the rules that have been prescribed to us. So a dad who described coronavirus as a political ploy and blasted state home orders as bull has died after contracting the disease, according to reports. So he's called John W. McDaniel from Marlin County in Ohio. He died in hospital on April 15th after firing off a string of angry Facebook posts about the contagion. The 60-year-old was diagnosed with COVID-19 in late March. Late March. He's reportedly the first to die from the killer bug in the county, uh, with this post being widely shared online, um, reporting according to the sun. So lockdown measures in the US are done on a state-by-state -state basis. In the case of Ohio, the governor is Mike DeWine. Uh, a post reportedly written by Mr. McDaniel said, if what I'm hearing is true, that DeWine has ordered all bars and restaurants to be closed, I say bull. Um, he doesn't have the authority. If you are paranoid about getting sick, just don't go out. It shouldn't keep those of us from living our lives. This madness, madness has to stop. In another post, he asked, does anybody have the guts to say this COVID-19 is a political ploy, asking for a friend to prove me wrong? And sadly, coronavirus said to this man, hold my beer, and here we are. Um, Mr. McDaniel's page apparently has now been taken down. Uh, Snyder Funeral Homes posted an obituary which said Mr. McDaniel was a loving family man who was planning to build a cabin to live in, out, live out his retirement years. It says, you could not have known a more loving and loyal husband, father, son, brother, uncle and friend, it said. He was truly looking forward to building a new family cabin in the self-titled nature retreat of Lockwood, 50 plus acres in Marion County, where he and his wife, Lisa, plan to enjoy their retirement years. Uh, service will be live streamed by the funeral home on April 22nd. So in a statement, on behalf of the McDaniels family, they would like to extend a heartfelt thank you to the nurses at Marion General Hospital 
and to all the staff at Riverdale, uh, Riverside Methodist Hospital for everything they did to try and save Johnny's life from COVID-19, the obituary continued. They would also like to remind everyone to continue practicing social distancing and keep each other safe. So Marion County has 834 confirmed virus cases, while Ohio has 12,516. At least 491 people have been officially reported to have died. Uh, there is a growing number of protests against the lockdown measures in the US, with thousands of Trump supporters holding armed rallies, bemoaning their loss of freedom. Uh, protesters, protesters are defying state governors' stay-at-home orders and demanding to be let out. Uh, far right extremists, religious fundamentalists, and armed militia are among the demonstrators, a mirror investigation has found. So, yes, first and foremost, I'm not going to give it, I told you so, what an idiot. No, it's a guy, it's a father, he's died. He had um, an opinion on this virus, which is incorrect, but it's not. he's not alone. A lot of people share this. And, you know, so it's sent, sadly, he kind of defied the... Um, lockdown we encourage others to do the same and as a result he contracts it and it's and he's now it's killed him so like i say it's going to be easy to kind of you know say serves him right no, nobody deserves this nobody wants this is there a chance that maybe he felt this way because the kind of concerns were not accurately portrayed to the public was it not kind of Was the information not given to him in a way where he believed it, is what I'm getting at. You know, if we could, if they had shown, if if the virus had been shown to, you know, if the, how can I put it? If the warning had been very, very clearly um, disseminated to the public, if it's like, this is, you know, this is why you should take this seriously. Here's the information, here's the stats. Here are the, the people, the, the top scientists in the country and around the world. This is what they're saying. Could that have been a factor? You know, was, it, was the coverage, you know, I don't know what the coverage was like there, but could it have been um, that maybe it wasn't communicated effectively enough that, you know, a lot of people took the advice as they should, but some people maybe thought, well, I'm not entirely certain that this is correct. I don't know. What I will say is what I said in a video a couple of weeks back when all this kicked off. People are going, look, you know, they're trying to take away your civil liberties and this, that, and the other. And it's like, look, understand the government of every country wants you at work because you at work builds the economy. You pay tax, you create things that are sold, commerce, trade. They don't want you at home. The government doesn't want you at home. They don't want you locked down. They want you at work. The fact that they are saying, don't go, and we will pay you not to go, speaks volumes, because that is the last thing the government wants. There is no way that this is locking you down is to their benefit. So if they're saying, stay at home, you should probably listen, because it is not in their interest to keep you at home. They want you out in the... They want work. They want production. They want economy they want money in the system they want taxes they want all this stuff they you know the government runs the funding runs you know everything that is paid for by the government is funded by taxpayers and businesses so the last thing any government would want is for business to stop the fact that they are stopping it and saying stay at home we will in the uk obviously we're giving you 80 percent of your salary we'll pay you 80 percent of your salary to not go to work speaks volumes and that is the same case here. This is why it should be listened to, because they don't want you at home any more than you want to be at home. They're not tramping on your civil liberties. This is not the man telling you what to do. You know, it is in your best interest. You reflect, we, the people elect the government to act on their behalf, and many, many times they don't do that, admittedly. There's a lots of time when the government seems very, very self-serving, or they will help certain members of society, they will hurt certain business partners and, and big corporations. That's how it feels a lot of the time. But their primary goal is to serve the public. And in this case, that's what they're doing. And I'm not going to criticise... I mean, it says, you know, it are lots of demonstrators, they're all rednecks and Trump supporters, and it's like, well, yeah, maybe, but I bet there's Democrat supporters who would feel the same. 
it's easy to jump on Trump because you know he's doing all the briefings at the minute and some of the information has not been 100% accurate and people have been coming down on him and all this lot. And yes, he did. Those tweets about liberate Minnesota and this, completely wrong, in my opinion. There's no way you should be encouraging that. But that aside, I think on balance that there's probably groups from all areas of society kind of wanting to defy this and going out, there will be. So, yes, there was probably, you know, a lot of Trump supporters holding armed rallies. There's probably a lot of Democrats because just it's not necessarily a party thing. It's just a, a state thing. If you were in a state where, you know, um, holding guns and, and you think that's part of your part of the Constitution and that no matter what party you are, you will want to defend that. And if you think people are coming to take your guns or take your liberty, then you're going to go out and show strength and protest against it. So yeah, I think it's all, it's not just, it's not partisan, it's just people doing it. But please don't. And this is a prime example of why not. And his family, if anything, can good can come from this gentleman's death. It will be that now people are hopefully getting the, getting the point. If they didn't have it before, surely this is going to help. You know, this guy said, you know, it's... It's not as bad as you think. Don't listen to it. It's just a political ploy. And now, so hopefully now other people who may have a similar mindset said, well, this guy was, you know, he was he was on my page. He was on my team. And these, the virus has killed him. So maybe they will think twice. If there's anything good that can come from this, maybe it's that. Maybe people who kind of in his sphere who may be on his side will now start heeding the advice. Because like I say, and I'll just reiterate one more time, governments don't want you at home, they want you at work, they want you working, that's how they generate revenue. If they're telling you to stay home, which is the last thing they want, you should probably listen because they wouldn't say it unless it was absolutely necessary. Anyway, let's move on. Story number five, last story of the day is from The Guardian. UK ad watchdog bans claims that IV drips can treat coronavirus. So, again, similar to what I said in the previous video, people try to profiteer of this horrible, horrible situation. And again, there's, there's tears to this. Um, let me give you the article. So the advertising watchdog has cracked down on three companies for implying they could provide immune boosting IV drips that could prevent or treat coronavirus. So the Advertising Standards Authority, the ASA, has banned the adverts and marketing claims made by the private Harley Street Clinic, uh, Reviv, Revive, R-E-V-I-V, and Cosmetic Medical Advice UK after fast-tracking its investigations. A page on the private Harley Street Clinic website promoted its Immuno Booster IV infusion, which costs around £350 and contains zinc and common vitamins, including Z, uh, C, and link it to preventing infection from the virus. And maintaining and boosting your immune system is vital as this is your protection against this virus and other pathogens, the web, the web page said. In the second case, two posts, posts on Instagram featured an image of Dr. Rita Rackers of Cosmetic Medical Advice UK having her super immune system booster drip at the clinic. Uh, the booster with a range of over-the-counter vitamins such as B and C in a saline solution was marketed as a good way to boost your immune system and protect you from viral infections. So again, the wording there, that's, that second one would be more careful. They're not saying coronavirus, but saying viral infections. And, uh, you know, obviously your head's going to make the leap. In the third case involving Reviv or Revive, uh, featured the promotion on the company's website of its Mega Boost IV therapy containing a high dose of vitamin C. The uh, text claimed that we're also witnessing clin clinical trials in hospitals treating coronavirus using high intravenous doses of the powerful antioxidant vitamin C with some initial positive results. Uh, the ASA investigated after receiving complaints from the public that the ads were medicinal, uh, that were medicinal claims for products not licensed as medicine by the UK's Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, the MHRA, and a breach of the UK Advertising Code. Uh, the MH. Uh, RA said that any mention of coronavirus COVID-19 in the promotion of an IV drip product would bring the product under medicines regulations, as would any claim that implied treatment of or protection from the virus, the ASA said. Uh, we considered that consumers would interpret the claims to mean that the IV drip could help prevent people from catching coronavirus COVID-19. Yeah, just what I said. Uh, the ASA ruled that in each case the products were not licensed as a medicinal product and therefore banned the ads and marketing claims. And we concluded that as uh, the ad therefore breached the UK advertising code and must not appear again in the form complained of, the ASA ruled. 
Uh, next week, the ASA's compliance team will issue an enforcement notice jointly with the MHRA to other businesses that offer IV drips, making them aware of the rulings and directing them to remove any COVID-19 related claims from their websites and social media pages. So, yeah, again, just... Now, there's... This is the primary thing, the secondary thing. So the secondary things are not... To me, there's people trying to profiteer, but in a less insidious way. So I mentioned this before. There's people on Facebook and that, and I used to follow... I used to be very into fitness. I was a personal trainer, so I used to follow a lot of fitness people and fitness pages and things. Now, at the minute, there's loads of people selling at-home workouts. Fine, absolutely fine. People can't go to the gym. If this people can keep a workout and you can sell a workout, okay, I've got nothing against that. There's people selling um, diets and things... Again, keep you healthy, fine. At that point, it's fine. As soon as it starts saying and it starts drifting into, you know, boost your immune system, this kind of thing, it starts gaining a little bit, well, you've never mentioned this before. And now all of a sudden, it's this diet, which you've, you've never said anything before, because everybody advertises diets as, as weight loss. Very few people advertise, on particularly on fitness pages, Diets as a health thing, it's always a weight loss thing because that's why this, the term diet tends to associate with that. But now all of a sudden it's like, oh, this diet also has immune boosting properties. And it's like, yeah, you've slipped that in there for some reason. Again, that's fishing and I don't like it. I don't like it all. This is the other end of the scale. Not as bad as the guy the other week who was trying to sell, like, who promised that his injections were like a 100% cure or a... a um, a vaccine for coronavirus for like three and a half thousand dollars for a family of four and all this rubbish. But these are kind of out, they're in, they're just below that line. These are people basically trying to sell you something which they say or they kind of claim and hint at is good for preventing viral infections and this kind of thing. And what's insidious about it is, yes. If you've got a good healthy body, if you've got a good healthy diet and you're getting all the vitamins and minerals in it, your system is going to be in better health. So therefore, it could help you fight off infections. It's like anything. It's like if you're, if you're fit and healthy, you're more resilient to certain illnesses. Not necessarily catching them, but kind of your body fighting them. You know, it's like anything. I don't think that eating a certain food is going to stop me getting a virus because a virus is not dependent on your diet. It's, you know, it's in, in such as COVID. It gets into your system through, I think, it's getting through your eyes, getting through your nose, through soft tissues, through your palate, that kind of thing. So no matter how healthy my diet is, these are always open. So it's probably not going to stop you getting it. No diet is going to stop you getting this thing. But the better your immune system is, it's a fighting chance that your body's natural defense is, you know, helping to what degree i don't know but when marketers and product people are selling products kind of hint that you know this can now prevent it almost it's like no it can't it can't but saying oh well you know vitamins and this vitamins and minerals and all this kind of stuff does um um will help you if you get a virus yeah it will possibly help but it's like fitness supplements. Uh, there's one, and I can't think of it off the mad. But they're very clever, and this is a very, this is similar sort of marketing to me. So there's like um, a supplement. So like a fitness supplement will say, you know, if your body's low in this, you can have muscle fatigue, you can have this, and you you don't grow, and etc. 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 And it's you like. That is all true. However, most people are not deficient in this particular vitamin or mineral. They don't say that, especially in Western countries. So what they say is it's kind of true, but it's 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 deceitful. So it's like uh, in this case, it's like yeah, these vitamins and minerals and that have been shown to to help this and help that. Number one, there's no claim, there's no status, there's nothing in here that says these things will, that having vitamin C and all this kind of stuff, there's no study so far, it's like this is going to help you fight off COVID. What they also don't say is if you've got a reasonable, healthy, balanced diet, 
you're probably getting all the vitamins and minerals you need. You don't need these, these supplements. You don't need these extra things. And again, it kind of, to me, it just ties in with the fitness thing. It needs to be like a patch. It was like a nicotine patch of vitamins, which helps you lose weight. And you're like, no, it doesn't. And it's like, you need these vitamins. You need these vitamins. You need vitamins. Yeah, you do. But chances are you're getting them. And they never say, oh, well, it's, um, it's your body's, if you've got a good diet, you've got all this anyway. You don't need the supplement because obviously they're going to make money. So what they do is drill down. This supplement contains these vitamins, and your body needs these. And if you've got, if you're short, if you're deficient in these vitamins, all these bad things happen. Yeah, all these bad things do happen if you're deficient in these vitamins. But chances are you're not. Again, particularly in the Western world, the Western diet, although it's it's not the healthiest diet in the world by any stretch of imagination, it's varied and it's copious enough that you get most of the vitamins and minerals. You you don't hear about people with massive minimal mineral deficiencies all the time, it's very, very rare in Western developed countries. Um, the only time I've heard of it recently is kind of vegans who've cut things out and you know maybe not found the right balance of other things to kind of fill the gap that an animal product has, has left. Um, so yeah, I'm going on a bit of a ramble here, but yeah, essentially these things just really really annoy me because it is profiteering off people's fear that's the top and bottom of it profiteering off people's fear this is like you know this will help you fight the virus um come and get this drip pay us 350 quid for it what's in it vitamin c and zinc and that so that's stuff that's in a lot of food i eat and fresh fruit and you know so yeah I'm glad these ads have been banned because just reading, I've not seen the ads, but reading the wordage that was on there, you can easily see how some people would be taken in by it. People who are fearful, who at the minute will try anything, especially if you have if you know somebody who's had COVID or if you've had it yourself and it's, you know, and if you've had a really bad time with it or you know somebody who has or somebody who's passed away from it and you have people in your life you care about, you're going to worry and you're going to think, well, anything I can do to just stop them getting it or to make them more capable of fighting it, I will do. And these companies know that and they are preying on it. And it just drives me mad. So, yes. So not just, this is a good thing because it's been stopped. But just keep your eyes open, be very, very aware. You're going to see a lot of this stuff. Until there's a vaccine, you're going to see loads. It's going to be everywhere. People are going to be claiming that this, that and the other will cure this or will help this. And, and... At the minute, there is absolutely no testing and no proof behind it. Um, you know, when it started, it was garlic. Well, garlic's going to help you defend against it. And it's like, no, garlic's got a lot of health properties, but this isn't one of them. But garlic's cheap. You don't get a company selling super garlic. So it's misinformation, but it was reasonably harmless. You know, I don't think that anybody read that. I thought, well, I'll eat, I'll eat garlic and I'll go out. You know, and I'll ignore social distancing. I don't think anybody did that. And I'm not saying people ignore that here, but I just think it's giving false hope. And again, it's trading on people's fear. And I just I can't abide it. Anyway, so let's leave it there for now. So links to all the stories I've discussed can be found in the description below. So feel free to go and check them out. Let me know what you think about, think about this video and tell me just some good news. Some of the good that's going on in your life or people around you. And stay positive and stay safe. So anything you'd like to say, put it in the comments, please. Along with any thoughts you'd like to share. These are mine. They're not necessarily important. They're not necessarily right or wrong. They're just what was on my mind. So until next time, bye for now.